Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Owen Staltari and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last year or so, I've been featuring each the Amergi and trying to get to know their stories a little bit better. They really are an amazing, amazing group of ladies. There are over 260 of them, and today we're on episode 60, if you can believe that. But before we begin, let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. The next three are ways to help the channel grow. You can select Coffee or Patreon, and also PayPal on my Have Roots Will Travel websites. All of these are ways of showing your support. Thank you to all of you who have shown your support thus far. So let's get started and get to know our Fia Marie of this episode. The Fia Marie between 1634 and 1662 were about 260 ladies who came to the colony and tried to help build a true country. Obviously, 10 girls per year, because that's what it averaged out to, is not enough in 28 years um, to build a country. But they, the, those girls who came and actually created families are truly the grandmothers of Quebec, New France, and their, um, their filles du roi, les filles du roi who came after them are truly the founding mothers. But these ladies came to a place that wasn't even civilized and were absolutely brave and courageous to come. So we salute them. And let's have a look at our feed Amagi of this episode. So they feed Amagi, episode 60, Michelle Leflot. Let's get, and she is, comes to us from a viewer request. I do not have her in any of my files. Let's get to know Michelle a little bit better. So we know that she was born around 1641. We do not know where in France she's from. Her parents, we believe, were Antoine Le Flotte and Marguerite Lamaire. Now, it is possible that that Marguerite is the last name of her mother is not Lamaire because there are some that have said that they simply put Lamaire, the mother, in other words. So, um, I, you know, that is kind of a questionable, uh, questionable last name. That after her father's death, she arrived in New France in 1654. The groom that she selected and who selected her, his name, Jacques Perrault. He was born in 1630 in a commune called Mons in France, and his parents were Jean Perrault and Mathurin Bigot. And you can see the little sign for Mons right there. There's about 500 people that live there. It is part of the Nouvelle Aquitaine region, and inside of that, it is part of the Charente Maritime um, Departement. And the saint Severin Church has existed since the 12th century. Very small little village that Jacques came from. Jacques would arrive in New France. While we're not sure when he would arrive, we know that he had there by 1654 because that's when he got married. So probably, presumably, he came and did his apprenticeship and um, was ready to marry. So we're thinking maybe three years before. So if anyone has any other information, I'd love to find that out. So they were married at Quebec City on August 31st, 1654. And so they would settle on the island of Orleans. He was given a land grant in 16, they were given a land grant in 1656, making them among the most, the earliest pioneers of this island. Ile d'Orléans is located in the St. Lawrence River, about three miles east of downtown Quebec City. The island was one of the very first parts of the province to be colonized by the French, and a large percentage of French Canadians can trace their ancestry to the early residents of this island. Always remember that it was a at different times called Grand Ile, Sainte Marie, and Saint Laurent, until it was changed to Ile d'Orléans in honor of Henry II, the Duke of Orléans, uh, who was the son of King Francis I. And so one of the things I always like to point out is the fact that it is subdivided into six different 
uh, sections. We have St. Patronine as you get on the island, St. Pierre, St. Famille, St. Francois, St. Jean, and St. Laurent. All of these are different little towns and you need to know where your family settled in order to kind of look where it is. It's a, a small island and a big one all at once. So very, very important. Here we have the 1666 census. We have Jacques and Michel there and we have Marie, their uh, oldest daughter, Anne, Joseph, Catherine, and Grégoire uh, Gondé, who was an engagé, another um, gentleman who was obviously doing a contract. We, then in the 1667 census, we have Jacques Perrault and Michel. Um, listed there, we have Marie, Anne, Joseph, and Catherine. And we have nine beasts, which are like cattle, and 18 apavala. That is a lot. So we have about 15 acres of land on the island. Having 10 children. Marie married Francois Jarret de Versailles and would have 12 children, six of whom would survive. She is the mother of the very famous Madeleine de Versailles, who was the heroine of Versailles who saved her, her town um, in one of the battles. And she, Madeleine would become uh, the Signores of Saint Anne de la Parade. So kind of an interesting story there. Anne was married Gabrielle Tiberge and have three children, one of whom would survive before her early death at 26. Joseph was married Marie Gagné and have nine children, six of whom survived to adulthood. Catherine was married Etienne Janot and have six uh, children, and three of whom would survive, but only one who had descendants. Jacques would marry Anne Gagné and would have one child who would survive before his early death at 32. Marie would die in infancy. Pierre would marry Marie Willis, who along with her sister and mother were, sur were survivors of an Indian kidnapping from the native New England and, and who had made a life from this horrendous event in Quebec. Marie would also pass away in infancy. Marguerite would also die. The second Marguerite would marry André Sel and have one child who would make it to adulthood. In the 1681 census, we have Jacques and Michel aging, but um, their children are there. Joseph, Catherine, Jacques, Pierre, Marie, Marguerite. They have one gun. They have eight. 14 goats, and get this, they have 25 arpamala on that island. That's an enormous feat. So about 22, 22 acres of land, I would, I would guess. Jacques would die first at, in 1703. He was 73 years old. He and Michel had been married 48 years. Michel her, herself would pass away seven years later. She was actually died in Montreal. She was probably living with one of her children. She was 69 years of age. She and Jacques would have 138 descendants. Just a remarkable story. For more information about Jacques and his family and our Fajoua, we will turn to our free French Canadian ancestors who have downloaded all of the different books and they have that. You can download it. it it's found in, in the um, series number 26. We have the biographical portrait of Jacques Perrault and definitely check that out. It really is a remarkable story. As a lasting tribute, Jacques Perrault and Michel Leflot are listed on that beautiful monument at Ile d'Orléans. These are pictures I took last summer in, a, in July of 2023, and I was able to capture Michel Leflotte and Jacques Perrault on the, um, on the plaque. And just when you stand in front of that monument, it is kind of an emotional thing. I have many, many ancestors on that on that particular monument and it was it was a powerful moment for me so i encourage you all if you have ancestors who were the, among the pioneers to go and visit the site and even if you don't it's just a beautiful beautiful part of quebec so definitely check it out 
These are the resources I use on a continual basis. I want to spotlight one in this episode, the French Canadian Genealogist. It's a remarkable site, really powerful and very well researched. I really love going there and just absorbing the information and the passion that is behind that website. So please check it out. I think you'll be pleased. And so we end episode 60. Michelle was a very interesting lady. I think she was very strong. And her and Nicola made an incredible team on the island of Orleans. And to stand before the monument this past summer and see their names was truly uh, an amazing, you know, an amazing feeling to know that there's that connection. And I think that Michelle was truly a woman of substance and someone who really made a difference in the lives of her descendants and in the life uh, with her husband and her children. So for that, we bless and we thank her and we are so grateful that she came to our shores. Thank you so much, Michelle. Until I see you on episode 61, au revoir.